All right, so let's evaluate, simplify, and translate expressions. Okay, a lot of people get hung up on the word evaluate. Evaluate just means um, see what you can do with it and then do what you can. So in this case, it says evaluate x plus 7 when x is 3. So that means I'm going to take this 3 right here and I'm going to put it in right there. So I'm going to replace the x with 3. So I get 3 plus 7. And what happens whenever I add 3 plus 7? I get 10. And so 10 is my final answer here. All right, sorry about that. Thought I'd give you a little bit of music. Actually, my alarm just went off. So um, now let's evaluate x plus 7 when x equals 12. So I'm going to put 12 in where I see x right there. So now I get 12 plus 7, and 12 plus 7 is 19. So 19 is my final answer after I've evaluated x plus 7 when x equals 12. Okay, again, we're going to evaluate here. So I'm going to put in at 5 wherever I see x. Now, a lot of people get confused here and they want to make this 95. That's not what that means. 9x means 9 times x minus 2. So in this case, I'm going to put 5 in where I see x. So I've got 9 times 5 minus 2. Now I need to multiply these guys together, so 9 times 5 is 45. 45 minus 2 is 43. Okay, so on the next one, I'm going to let x equal 1 this time. So I've got 9 times 1 minus 2. 9 times 1 is 9. 9 minus 2 is 7. Okay, on this one it says I'm going to evaluate x squared. x squared means x times x. So that equals x squared, okay? So in this case, I'm going to let x equal 10. So I've got 10 times 10, which another way to write that is 10 squared. And that is 10 times 10 is 100. So 100 is my final answer here. Okay, this one says evaluate 2 to the x power when x equals 5. So we're going to let x equal 5 here. So I've got 2 to the 5th power. Now what 2 to the 5th power means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So 2 times itself 5 times. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, so I've got 4 times 4 times 2. 4 times 4 is 16, and then I've got the times 2 at the end there, so 16 times 2 is 32. 2 to the 5th power is 32. Okay, on this one I'm going to evaluate 3x plus 4y minus 6. Now notice I have two different variables in this problem, but I've also got two different values for x and y. So I'm going to put 10 in for x, and I'm going to put 2 in where I see y. And remember, this means 3 times 10 plus 4 times 2 minus 6. So I want to do 3 times 10, and I get 30. Now I can do 4 times 2, which is 8. Now I do my addition and subtraction from left to right. 30 plus 8 is 38. And what is 38 minus 6? It is 32. That's my final answer. All right, let's take a look at this one. 2x squared plus 3x plus 8. But notice how we only have one value of x. That's okay, we're going to put that in there and there. So I've got 2, and notice how I'm going to use parentheses this time to indicate multiplication. You don't have to, but I'm going to do it like that. 
3 times 4 plus 8. And that's the same as using the dot. Um, I prefer that we get away from using the little x for multiplication because x stands for a variable whenever you do algebra. So get away from that. Okay, so the first thing you want to do in this problem is you want to square your 4. So 4 squared means 4 times 4. So you would have 2 times 16 plus, I'm going to go ahead and multiply these, 12 plus 8. So what's 2 times 16? It's 32. Okay, now I'm going to add the 32 and the 12 together, and I get, what, 44 plus 8. Add those together, and you get 52. Okay, so now you need to be able to identify terms, coefficients, and like terms. This says that a term right here is a constant, constant being a something that doesn't change. So like the number 5 is a constant. Um, the number 10, any number that doesn't have a variable that it's multiplying, then that is considered a constant term is a constant or the product of a constant and one or more variables. Some examples of terms are, and then you guys can read these. Um, so I'm going to look at this column right here. So a term would be 7, 9a, y, or 5x squared. And, and terms are, are um, separated by a plus or a minus sign. So if I had 3x plus 5. This thing has two terms, and the terms are 3x and 5. Those are the two terms. Now, whenever we talk about coefficients, coefficients are the numbers that are multiplying the variables. So in 7, there is no variable, so your coefficient is just 7. On 9a, then the coefficient is 9. Your variable is a, but your coefficient is 9. On the term y, now there is some understood numbers here. The number in front of this is 1y. So we normally don't write the 1, but it is there. It's understood to be there. So the coefficient is 1 on that one. 5x squared, your coefficient is 5. Now, one of the key things that you need to learn in algebra are like terms. If they have the same variable or variables and exponents, then they are considered like terms. And constant terms are like terms. So 5 is a constant, 7 is a constant. Those are like terms, so you can add those together to get 12. Now, like this says, 7 and 4 are like terms. You can only add and subtract like terms. They have to be the same in order for you to add and subtract them. Okay, so let's identify our like terms first, and then we're going to combine our like terms. So I usually will underline with the same number of underlines my like terms. So in this case, 3x and 4x are like terms. 7 and 5 are like terms. Now, due to the commutative property of addition, we are allowed to add in any order. So if I did this, I would put my like terms together, and then I would just combine my like terms. So 3x plus 4x is 7x plus 7 plus 5 is 12. Now, this step right here is not truly necessary. I'm just showing you that we are allowed to move things around when we add. Also, this is not, or this is finished, completely finished right there. You cannot do anything else to that. 7x and 12 are not like terms, so please do not go any further with this. The answer to this problem is just 7x plus 12, because we don't know what x is. x could be any number. 
Okay, so in this one, we're going to simplify this expression. We need to identify our like terms. Remember, like terms means same variable or variables and same exponents. So our like terms in this problem are 7x squared and x squared and then 8x and 4x. So remember earlier, whatever I said, if there's no number in front of the variable, then it's understood to be a 1. So in this case, you have 7x squared plus 1x squared, and I get 8x squared. Don't add your exponents together. And then whenever I combine these like terms, I have 8x plus 4x, which is 12x. I cannot combine the 8x squared plus 12x because they are not like terms. This is my final answer. Okay, so whenever we translate words into algebraic expressions, these operations right here are different ways to say addition. These right here, different ways to say subtraction. These right here, multiplication, down here, division. So you need to probably take a minute or so to read this. You might want to hit pause and just read through this. Um, I do want to point out that addition and multiplication can be done in any order. Now, subtraction and division order truly matters. So 5 minus 3 is not the same thing as 3 minus 5. So be careful with how you read this. This one right here means you have to swap the order. It still means that right there, A minus B, but notice how the B comes first. So I want you to take just some time to read through this and, um, and understand that there are some that will throw you off because especially this one right here, that is the one that people miss the most. B less than A means A minus B. Okay, so we're going to translate the word phrase into an algebraic expression. The difference of 20 and 4. Now, we're not using that 4 less than 20, it didn't say that, or 20 less than 4, so we don't have to swap the order of this one. So the difference just means subtraction, and I'm going to write this as 20 minus 4. Now, according to the instructions, all they wanted us to do was translate into an expression. So this answer right here, we know that the answer is 16, but we don't have to write it because we're following the instructions. All we had to do was translate it. Now, quotient means divide, and you have to divide in a specific order. So we put this number first, 10x, and we're dividing. Now, there's another way to write this that honestly I prefer, and that is using a fraction bar. So I prefer this one, but I would not mark it wrong if you wrote that one. Okay, so for this one, um, we've got 8 more than y. And remember, with addition, that's that can be done in any order. So we could do 8 plus y. We could do y plus 8. That order does not matter. This is the one that matters. 7 less than 9z. So this one we do have to reverse the order. 9z less 7.